Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we extend our linear algebra knowledge to general vector spaces. And there we already found out that general linear maps can still be represented by matrices. And for a lot of applications, the best matrix representation is given by the so-called Jordan normal form. And we will continue with that in today's part 37. In particular, we will define the so-called fitting index. This one is named after a German mathematician called Fitting. But I think it's kind of funny, because the name is also explained by the fact that this index fits in when we talk about the dimensions of generalized eigenspaces. However, before we start defining this index, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget that you can download PDF versions for all these topics with the link in the description. Okay, then I would say we can immediately start by fixing the notation of this video. Namely, A should just be a complex valued square matrix. This already implies that A has at least one eigenvalue, so let's fix one and let's call it lambda. And now in order to keep our calculations short, let's introduce a new matrix and let's call it N. And this one should just be A minus lambda times the identity matrix. So not so surprising, as we learned in the last video, this is exactly what we need to calculate generalized eigenspaces. Indeed, such a generalized eigenspace is just the kernel of n to a power j. So we would say this is the generalized eigenspace of rank j. And in order to be precise, we would say it's with respect to the matrix A and its eigenvalue lambda. However, these two things are fixed now. In this video, we will not change the matrix A or the eigenvalue lambda. Therefore, we can just abbreviate the whole eigenspace just by a letter capital E. And there the rank will be important, so I use a superscript J. So there we have it, this is the definition. These are the subspaces we will talk about in this video. More concretely, we will talk about the dimensions we can have for these generalized eigenspaces. Hence, equivalently, we could also talk about the range of NJ, because the dimensions are connected by the rank nullity theorem. In that sense, let's also introduce a capital R to denote these subspaces given by the range. And with that, we finally have all the definitions we need. And maybe here as a reminder, j can be any natural number and also zero. However, as we have discussed in the last video, we do not really have to go to infinity, because at some finite index, nothing will change anymore. And today, we will actually find this index in our infinite chain. There, please recall, the kernels we have are in fact nested in the following way. We can start with E0, which is just the trivial subspace anyway. And after that comes our ordinary eigenspace, which is definitely larger than just the zero vector. And then we just continue and continue by increasing the index, but then, at some point, we know that all these subset relations are actually equalities. So let's say we have the index k, and then comes k plus 1, and so on. So we don't know how big this index k is, but we know it will happen eventually. Simply because if we don't have equality, the dimension has to increase in this step. However, obviously, we have a maximal dimension we can reach, namely n. And moreover, we can have different possibilities how much the dimension increases in one step. And we know since we have an eigenvalue that in the first step the dimension will definitely increase. Therefore, we could just look at all steps where no increase is happening. So these are the indices j where ej is equal to ej plus 1. So let's put these indices in a set and let's consider the minimum. In other words, this will be the first step in the chain where no increase in the dimension is happening. And exactly the index to this step is what we call the fitting index. And in this video I will just denote it by a lowercase d. And now this d could be 1 or a larger natural number, but we definitely know it exists as a finite number. 
And at this point you should immediately see what the advantage of this D is because we can rewrite the chain with proper subsets. So let's copy the chain picture where we just have a general index J in the middle. And at the end of the chain we have the index D where we have an equality. Hence all the other subset relations before are proper subsets, so not equalities. Indeed we don't know what happens afterwards, but at the moment let's just concentrate at this beginning. And now we can make this whole chain even nicer by also putting in the ranges. In fact it's not hard at all to show that the ranges are also nested just the other way around. Indeed by just using the definition of the range we immediately get these inclusions. And moreover on the left we also know that R0 has to be the whole space Cn. And now the first question would be do we also have the proper subsets and the equality here in the picture for the ranges as well. It's correct but not immediately clear because we have to put in our rank nullity theorem. This means we can use our matrix Nj as a mapping from the top level to the lower level. In fact we can do that no matter which index we consider. So let's apply the rank nullity theorem to any power of our matrix N. And obviously the rank is given by the dimension of the range and the nullity is given by the dimension of our E spaces. And then if we add both dimensions we know what we get out is the dimension of the space we put in which is Cn. So we can call the index j or k, it does not matter. The important thing is it holds for any index we can consider. And now most importantly the rank nullity theorem tells us what happens in the second chain as well. Namely since the right hand side here cannot change, the left hand side is also not allowed to change. Hence whenever we have a jump in the dimension of the E space we have the same amount of jump in the dimension of the R space. So this implies we definitely have the proper subsets on the lower level whenever we have them on the upper level. And moreover in the case the dimension of the E space does not change, the dimension in the R space can also not change. Therefore we have the first equality on the lower level exactly at the same spot. So this means we get our first result for the fitting index, namely instead of the E space here we could also choose the R space. So this is something you can immediately remember, we get the same D out. Now you should see this is really helpful because the ranges here are easier to deal with when we apply our matrix N to it. Namely if you apply N to each element of Rd what comes out is the whole set Rd plus 1. This follows from the definition because Rd plus 1 can be written as N to the power D plus 1 applied to any vector x in Cn. And there you see if we do it for Rd and apply 1N from the left we get the whole set on the right hand side. However now the good thing is that this set on the right hand side is actually rd again. So at this point we can use the result from before. And this is a crucial result because it tells us that we have a subjective map. More precisely we have a linear map from rd to rd given by the matrix N and this is subjective. However since we have linearity and the same dimension on the right and the left hand side we actually have a bijective map. So also a very nice result for our fitting index D our matrix N represents an isomorphism between the two ranges. And using that knowledge we can go one step further in our chain. This means now we consider R D plus 2. And again as before by the definition of the range this is simply N applied to R D plus 1. But obviously for R D plus 1 we already know it's equal to Rd. So then we have nRd and the same calculation as before shows us that this is Rd again. Therefore in the next step of the chain we still have an equality. And there you should see we can just go further and further in the chain and we still have an equality. Hence inductively we get the equality for every j we add to d. And obviously this is a really nice result because it tells us that the fitting index is the index where the chain stays stable. 
And moreover, this result completely translates to our E spaces as well. Again, the rank nullity theorem simply tells us that the equalities have to be at the same spots. And this is a really nice result because it tells us how our generalized eigenspaces behave. Indeed, now we know the whole chain already ends with the fitting index, which was the minimum anyway. And please recall, each step before increases the dimension of our generalized eigenspace by at least one. Hence our chain is not long at all, because d cannot be bigger than n, the dimension of our space Cn. So this is something you should remember, our chain ends with the fitting index. However, this also implies, until we reach our fitting index, we definitely have generalized eigenvectors. And how large the spaces are these eigenvectors span, we will discuss in the next video. So I really hope we meet there again, and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.